Hey there everyone, this is Brayden here with another game solid tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be going over attributes inside of game solid. We're going to be talking about the basics of attributes, what they are, uh, the different types of attributes, and then a little bit later on, we're going to be going over how we can use attributes inside of game solid. So all that really cool. Let's go ahead and dive in. So if you're new to game solid, we need to figure out what attributes are. In Game Solid, an attribute is a place to store values, and those values can be changed at any time. And you can you can use attributes to transfer data throughout your game. That's the main reason why we want to have attributes in our games to be able to transfer data between actors, uh, between scenes, and things like that. And so we can also use attributes to trigger events and trigger logic inside of our game. So an example of this would be, let's say you're playing a platformer game, and you're running along, and you fall into a pit, and you die. <laughs> uh, so when your character does die, you may want to change the game over attribute to true, telling Game Solid to execute some game over logic. And so that's a uh, just a very general example of how you might transfer data through different actors, through different scenes, and how you might transfer, uh, or rather, execute some logic inside of game solid so that those are what attributes are let's talk about the different types of attributes inside of game solid there are a total of six different types of attributes available to use inside of game solid we have the boolean attribute which can either equal true or false it can only equal true or false and so you may want to use a boolean attribute to uh, like i just said uh, trigger some game over logic when it's true Next we have the text attribute, and the text attribute can hold a string of letters or words or paragraphs, or you can write an entire letter in this attribute. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I love using text attributes, especially for word games, because you're dealing with letters and words and checking words and everything like that. So text attributes are pretty nice. We also have the integer attribute, and integers are positive or negative whole numbers. Uh, they can not hold decimal points, so if you want to have decimals inside of your attribute, you're going to want to use a real attribute. And real attributes are positive or negative numbers that can contain decimals. They don't have to contain decimals, but they can. And uh, so you may want to use a real attribute for a countdown timer or uh, timing how long it takes a player to get through a level or something like that. Next we have the angle attribute, which is a positive attribute. Uh, it can only be positive numbers that range from 0 to 359. And as you know, there are 360 degrees in a circle. And so once it gets to 359, it'll change back to 0 because that it's pretty much a full circle. It's exactly the same thing. So uh, finally, we come to the index attributes. And index attributes are positive whole numbers. They can never be negative, and they can never contain decimal points. So uh, those are the different types of attributes inside of Game Solid. Let's go ahead and switch over to Game Solid. I've created a uh, project that shows us the different types of attributes uh, and how we can use them for uh, certain things inside of Game Solid. So I'll go ahead and click Preview, and we see we have the Boolean attribute first at the top left here. And you can see inside of the white actor, it's displaying the value of false. And uh, when for this example, for this demo video, when we click inside of the actor, it's going to change to true. And so when I release the mouse button or when you're not touching the actor anymore on the touch device, it'll change back to false. So uh, either a true or false statement uh, inside of this Boolean attribute. So let me go ahead and show you how I set that up. I'll go into the Boolean actor here. And we always have two display text in this uh, demo project here for each actor. Uh, one of them is just showing uh, which actor is which on the preview scene, so I don't get confused between actors. And the other one is displaying an attribute. So uh, this first behavior here, this display text, is showing that it's the Boolean example. And then the second one is actually displaying game.clicked. And game.clicked, I'll back out really quick and go to the attributes tab inside of the inspector. Uh, clicked is an attribute that I created, and it's a Boolean attribute, and you can see that it's unchecked, so it does not have a check mark in there, and if it does, it means it's true. If it does, if it does not, then that means it's false. So it can either be true or false, that's all it can do. And so we'll go back into the actor, and you'll see we created a rule down here that says when touch is pressed, we're changing game.clicked to true. 
otherwise we're changing it to false. So when we touch this actor, we're changing the attribute to true. Otherwise, if we're not touching it, we're changing it to false. So that's the Boolean example. Next, we'll move to the text attributes. And remember, text attributes can contain letters, uh, paragraphs. I mean, it can contain a whole book if you wanted. Uh, and so this actor is actually displaying attributes 101. That's the uh, the words that are contained inside of this attribute here. And so when I go ahead and click this actor, it's saying it's changing attributes 101 to attributes 101 in game salad. So we added the words in game salad to this uh, the, the the content within the text attribute. So let me go ahead and show you how I set that up. It's pretty cool. Uh, again, I'll go into the attributes tab here and you'll see we have our text attribute right here and you see the initial value for this attribute is attributes 101 and so you can change this to whatever you want but I'll just keep it in as attributes 101 for right now and we'll go into the text actor right here and uh, you can see we're displaying game.text and we created a rule that says when touch is pressed we're changing game.text to I'll open up the expression editor by clicking the little e we're changing game.text to game.text and we're adding in game salad to whatever was currently in that attribute. And so the reason why we have game.text over here and game.text inside of the expression editor, which is on the right side of this uh, change attribute, is because we don't want to just add in game salad and put that into the game.text attribute. We want to make sure that we take whatever was currently in there and then add game in, and then add in game salad to that value. So uh, if we didn't have game.text in there, it would simply change game.text to in game salad instead of attributes 101 in game salad. And because it is a text attribute, we do have to use our quotes here uh, so that game salad knows that we this is anything within the quotes is what we want to add to the attribute. And the dot dot right here is just a concatenation. So uh, it's telling uh, game salad that this is what we're adding, or I'm sorry, this is what we're adding to this attribute. So. Uh, that's what we're doing there. So that's the text attribute. Like I said, I use text attributes all the time in my word games. I love them. Next, we come to the integer attributes. And for this example, I've set it up so that uh, the integer actor is going to count how many times we preview and restart the, the project file here. So if we click the re little refresh button up top, you'll see it begins to add one to the value. So we've ref refreshed the project 10 times now. And so that's pretty cool. And so you may want to use integers for uh, telling how many times the player has played a level or something like that, or how many times they've successfully completed the game. And so you can say maybe when it equals 10, you're going to have a pop-up that asks the user to rate the game on the App Store. So that's one example of what you could use with uh, this attribute right here. So let me go ahead and show you how I set that up. Uh, again, I'll go into the attributes tab and show you the attribute that I created. It's called games played and it's currently set to zero and it is an integer attribute. Switching back over to the actors tab, I'll go into the integer actor. And uh, within this actor, we are actually using two additional behaviors that I won't go into too much on how to use. Uh, but pretty much what we're doing is each time we refresh the game, we're wanting to make sure that we, well, one, save the attribute before uh, the game reloads and then we want to make sure that we re we load in the attribute value that we had beforehand so uh, if these were off if I turn these off and then preview the game it's not doing anything because it doesn't know that the value was current was set to one beforehand so we need to make sure that we save the attribute after we change it and then we load it back in so that way it uh, it remembers what the value was now you can see the change attribute right here. We're changing game.played uh, to game.plays or games played plus one. And again, the reason why we have this right here is we want to make sure that we uh, we're telling game style to add one to whatever was currently in this attribute. If it was zero, it would be one. Uh, if it was one, one plus one is two, and everything like that. If we did not have this in here, let me go ahead and delete this really quick. If we just had something like this, which is what a lot of beginners do, uh, then it's just going to change games dot, or I'm sorry, game dot games play to one. It's not going to add one to it because we're only telling it to change the value to one. So even if we had the number 100 in there, all it's going to do is 
change the value to one. So um, I'll go ahead and make sure that that didn't save. And so that's how we set up the integer attribute for this example. Next, we have the real attribute. And it's pretty cool because it can contain decimals and um, uh, decimal numbers and everything like that. So what in this example, what it's doing is it's tracking how long the preview has been running. So if I refresh, it's going to go back to 1, or I'm sorry, 0, and it's going to go to 4. So it's telling us that we've been previewing this for about 7 seconds right now. So that's kind of cool. And I'll go ahead and show you how I set that one up. It's pretty cool, and I'm not really creating anything. Uh, I'm simply displaying game.time. And if I back out and go to the attributes tab right here, you'll see game.time at the top. And it is not something that I created. It's something that GameSolid creates when you create a new project. So uh, it'll always be in your project. And all it does is track how long you've been playing the game. So that's pretty cool. Uh, next, I'll go ahead and click preview again. And we'll move on to the angle attribute. This one's kind of cool. Uh, I like this example that I have set up right here. When the mouse is inside of this actor, it's going to rotate, and we're displaying the rotation of this actor. So uh, when it does get to 359, uh, it's going to change to 0, which means it's done a full rotation. And so watch as it gets to 359 right there, and it changed back. So uh, this is a pretty cool example, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how I whipped this one up. Uh, we are constraining self.rotation to the value held within game.cuberotation. And cuberotation is, is an attribute that I created. And the constraint behavior is just making sure that self.rotation, which is the rotation of this actor, always equals the value held within game.cuberotation. And so we have a rule here that says when the mouse position is inside of this actor, every zero seconds we're changing game.cuberotation to the current value that was currently in there. Uh, plus 1.5678 and so it's just going to continually add 1.5678 to this attribute every zero seconds and so that's how we get that rotation so that's pretty cool finally we come to the index attributes which I use a ton I use it almost every single attribute that I create is an index attribute uh, and the reason why is just because it has so many uses um, and as you continue to use game solid, you'll just you'll just see how many uses it has. Um, the index attribute can only have positive whole numbers; it cannot contain decimals. And so you might want to use an index attribute for a score for lives, which is what I have set up right here. And so you're never going to have negative five lives, right? You're only going to have at the very minimum. You're not going to have any lives, which means you have zero lives. So in this example that I've set up for this demo video, each time we touch this actor, we're subtracting one from the value. And you'll see once we get to zero, each time I click it, it's not going to negative one or negative two because it can only go to zero. That's the lowest it can go. It can never be a negative number and it can never contain decimals. So uh, this might be good uh, if you want to say create a level select, you're not gonna have level negative five you'll only have level 1, 2, 3, 4. You're never going to have half a level, so you're never going to have 0 0.5 levels, right? So uh, an index attribute can be used for that as well. So uh, that's about it, guys. We've covered six attribute types in GameSolid, the six that are available to us. And all of these different types of attributes will be able to uh, be used in tables as well. But that's for a different video. And so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned a lot. And we will see you in the next one.